When developing a cross-platform app, maximizing code reuse is a priority. However, there are situations where it becomes necessary to tailor your code to specific platforms. React Native offers two approaches for organizing and separating platform-specific code. First is platform module, and second is platform-specific file extensions. Let's learn both these approaches in this video. Let's begin with the first approach, the platform module. Imported from React Native. This module detects the platform on which the app is running. You can use the detection logic to implement platform-specific code. For instance, consider our welcome text. On iPhone, it is appropriately positioned within a safe area view, but on Pixel, it is too close to the status bar. If we set padding top 25 on the container, it applies to both the devices. However, using the platform module, we can set a top padding only on Android. Padding top if platform.os is equal to Android, it is going to be 25. And if it is not Android, padding top is zero. Save the file. And we can see the extra padding is only added to the Android device. You can similarly check against iOS to apply styles specifically to iOS. While platform.os is suitable for small changes, a better option for more comprehensive platform-specific styles is to use platform.select. Let me show you an example where we completely change the text styles for iOS and Android. Let's leave font weight and text align as is, but change the font color and font size across the two platforms. For that, within text key, we're going to spread platform.select and curly braces. Within this object, we can specify iOS as a key to apply iOS-specific styles and Android as a key to apply Android-specific styles. For iOS, let's set color to purple, font size of 24, and let's also set italic styling. For Android, let's set color to blue and font size 30. Save the file. And you can see the different styles applied to the welcome text. We are dynamically setting styles based on the device platform. This first approach of using the platform module is appropriate when only small parts of a component are platform specific. For example, one single style or a group of styles. For more complex platform specific scenarios, you should rely on the second approach, which is platform specific extensions. In this approach, you split your code into separate files with .iOS and .android extensions before the file's main extension. React Native detects the extension and loads the relevant platform file when required by other components. Let's understand with an example. For this example, let's create a very simple button component that varies across the two platforms. Start by creating a new folder within the dynamic UI project folder. Components. Within this folder, create a subfolder named custom button. Inside custom button, create two new files. Custom button.ios.js and custom button.android. .js. These separate files cater to each platform. I'm going to copy paste the component code to save us some time. First, the iOS component code. It's a simple component that uses pressable and text components. It accepts on press and title as props. We also have some styling on both the components. Justify Content Center, Align Item Center, 
Background color, light blue. Border radius, 20. Padding, 10. For the text itself, purple color and font size, 18. Let's add a similar component in the other file for Android. Copy and paste. You can of course find this code on my GitHub repo. You can see it is pretty much the same except for the styles. Border radius 20, whereas Android has border radius 5. And Android color is blue, whereas iOS color is purple. Could you achieve this with platform.select? Of course you could. But the concept is what I want you to take away from this example. Having different components for iOS and Android and letting React Native decide what should be rendered. Back in app.js, import custom button from dot slash components slash custom button. And then invoke the component custom button, it accepts two props, title, since it's a pressable component, press me, and the other prop is on press, let's simply alert the text pressed. If we head back to the two devices, you can see we have run into a problem. And that is because our custom button is within the custom button folder. So we specify the file name, but without .iOS or .android extension. React Native will figure that out. If we now save the file and head back to the UI, we can see the same button rendered in different ways on iOS and Android. React Native automatically selects the appropriate version of the component based on the executing platform. In summary, React Native makes it possible to run platform-specific code using the platform module and platform file extensions. You can use platform.os or platform.select for minor style differences. However, for more complex components that need distinct appearances or behaviors across the two platforms, Using .iOS and .android file extensions is recommended. With that, we conclude this section on dynamic UI in React Native. We have learned how to adapt the application's user interface based on device dimensions using the Dimensions API, explored its drawbacks, and understood how the use window dimensions hook simplifies working with dimensions and responsive styles. We've also learned about the safe area view component for iOS, which ensures the application's UI adapts to hardware limitations like notches and rounded corners. And finally, we had a look at running platform specific code, which can be quite useful as iOS and Android at times require tailor made user experiences. All right, thank you for watching. If you're enjoying the content, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.